Kylie here for Board Game Geek, and we are at the very end of Gen Con 2019. I'm sitting down with my final guest of this show, which is uh, designer Elizabeth Hargrave. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How's the show been for you so far? It's been great. I'm pretty exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Understood. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you been, a, were you a regular Gen Con attendee before sort of the skies opened up and Wingspan was this on everyone's my mind? second Gen Con. Hi. The first mm -hmm. one was actually when I pitched Wingspan. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Was that um, just, la was it just last year it was or two like years, years ago? ago actually, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's actually a little bigger than. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Usually she's to spend my time at, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's been super fun to be here and just people coming by the booth all weekend. And, and yeah, you've been signing a lot of copies. Signing, yep. and <laughs> yeah, so it's really fun to meet everyone. Now, um, like for uh, I was just mentioning before we started that uh, uh, your inspiration for wanting to do Wingspan in the first place, if, if people aren't familiar with sort of where this idea came from. Yeah, so I've been a board game river for many, many years, and um, it really came out of a conversation with friends and my husband at a game night about, like, we're playing all these games, but none of them are actually about anything that we care anything mm. about, you know, castles and medieval history. Renaissance and something. And, <laughs> um, and so it was just sort of this, all right, if I want a game about something that I'm really interested in, maybe I just have to make it. <laughs> And then, so your 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 so passion. I'm a I'm I was gonna say your yeah. other passion project, games being one of them, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah. My husband and I were both getting like a little bit more serious about birding at the same time, and so that was something that I just we I started talking about. You know, uh, there are always you know wood and ore and stone in games, and like you could do that with more interesting resources in the natural world. But there's a lot of the same sort of supply and demand as um, as you think about other creatures as well as humans. So. Now I know that you were, there was a lot of work into going into making sure that all the different birds and, and their powers were all balanced and for all those yeah. inspiring designers who might be watching this or listening to this, you know, take us through, so it's, I think people are unaware maybe of how much work goes behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, a, it was a combination of sort of mathing things out in a big spreadsheet with all the birds in it, and then just playtesting and finding the points where people were like, oh, that seems overpowered or underpowered, and thinking about, you know, not wanting, I didn't really want to change bird by bird, but sort of concept by concept, oh, people feel like that should be worth more or less or harder or easier to do, and sort of then changing things across the whole set of birds and printing out a whole new set of cards. Right. And, yeah. Was there a time where the people's opinions did not match the math? A few times, <laughs> yes. People get, I think, psychologically attached to the birds they have in their hand <laughs> and don't do things that would be good for them, like talking cards or spending them to get more food um, that, that would be good for them, but they like can't stand to get rid of that bird. They want to play it out of their mat. <laughs> so there are little things like that that you have to mm -hmm. uh, take into account. And, yeah. So what was it like going to the uh, uh, Spiel des Jahres ceremony? Oh, it was in... amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> I actually had a few former winners reach out to me, or I reached out to them, and sort of was like, oh, is it worth the trip to Berlin? Like, you have to go. It was amazing. <laughs> Which it I was, suppose I, I should quantify that by saying Wingspan is the Kenner Spiel des Jahres, so it's the yes. connoisseur's game of the year, and right. Spiel des Jahres is the German game of the year award, so right, just in case right. you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will say I was lo looking at a little uh, photo recap of that, and, mm -hmm. and um, I, I do think Rainier Canizia's outfit. He won with the outfit. He won with the outfit. Although there was also a guy there in a toga for Carpe Diem that did okay. not get so many pictures taken of him because it wasn't the designer. Oh. But it was very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Now, when you, obviously Wingspan has, has taken off and been humongously, hugely successful, but you have a lot more designs you're actively working on. And yeah. Was Wingspan first? or Wingspan were you, was first. So, so just in that time span from when you pitched it two, three years ago, yeah. there are now other designs in the works as well. Yeah. So Wingspan expansions, we're definitely working on. The first one is done and should be out by the end of the year. Um, I have a little 18 card game called Tussie Mussy that was um, a button shy Kickstarter. They specialize in doing 18 card wallet games. Um, so that should be out this fall, September, October, I think, um, in print. And then, yeah, I have a couple more in the works after that. When you were thinking back to three years ago, I mean, is this 
Could you have ever imagined the trajectory of your life? Oh, no. Take I mean, you where you are. It's my first game, right? Like, this right. is just a huge blessing to, to have this much success. I never would have expected it. Yeah. I mean, now, and I think a lot of people are always curious. Uh, you know, I imagine you still have employment that is something not board gaming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, although I am a freelance consultant, so I'm able to sort of pick and oh, choose good. a little bit. And, uh, so, yeah, so you, you could give a little bit more time to gaming yeah. and then yeah. and then it's pull not, back a little bit. It's uh-huh. not all or nothing. It's, it's, thank goodness. I don't know if I ever would have finished Wingspan without being able to do that. Yeah. I mean, so. do you have a, a dream of going full-time someday? Or do you always we'll like see. to have a little bit of mix and match in there? I like my day job. Uh, I yeah. do have care policy, so it's hard <laughs> to give it up. But, um, but it, I easily have enough to do that I could spend full time on, on board games. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Well, before I let you go, I'm going to take a, a quick, quick glance over here to see if you guys have any questions for Elizabeth. This is the chance to ask them. Um, so we'll get a quick theme over there. Um, uh, Beth, I wanted comments. to say yes. when we play at home, when we play at home, we barf it, so when you place a bird out, you have to make the noise you would imagine the bird play. <laughs> Is and your mic live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's real crazy, <laughs> making all the noises. I have been known to, to play with people who have the Audubon app or the Merlin oh. app on their phones, and they'll play the actual bird songs when you play I them. I know. I mean, I think she went up to you. <laughs> but I, no, I'm, I'd be good with people just making up the noises to the is, is there a personal favorite within the deck? I, I, just as a bird, I always say my favorite bird is the roseate spoonbill. I grew up in Florida, and those are just like crazy Florida birds. They're like <laughs> big pink birds with the spoon-shaped bill. And, yeah. You know, I, I think I'm always fascinated because obviously I'm I'm sort of the bits maker for BGG, yeah. and you know we've made wingspan bits that that are. are oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say, well, we had the art to work with already, so that <laughs> that was our basis was already done. So yeah. you know, you know c- yeah. kudos to to Stonemeyers and the artist work. Yeah. Um, but I love games that generate a lot of aftermarket creativity. There's been so much. So right? I've been at the right, Meeple Source runs a booth alongside Stone Meyer, so I've been hanging out with their wooden bits all weekend. Yeah, and, but yeah. even just seeing, there's and a ton the of stuff on printing. Pinterest, 3D yeah. printing. Yeah, there's just a lot of people are very inspired to create with your game. I'm always, the, the one I can think of that probably did the most was okay. Agricola. That that mm. one, they, they made houses, they made characters, yeah. they made food, you yeah. know, food yeah. Meeple things. Yeah. Um, and I think we Man is also generating just like I want to create. People are like crocheting <laughs> nests for the uh, right. Yeah. And, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so fun to see. The, and the Wingspan Facebook group is so. Uh, there's like six thousand people in there. People are always posting pictures of their new stuff that they made, or just pictures of birds that they saw, or whatever. It's been, yeah, it's so fun. It's so fun. Um, some people were asking what you were a freelance consultant in. Oh, so healthcare policy. Um, I do a lot on the Medicare program, so I help the government figure out how to make Medicare better. Hey, that is a good job. (laughs) Um, What is the single best advice you can give a new designer? Oh, play test. Just keep Mm. play testing and play enough other games so that you develop your own personal sense of taste so that you have a sense of when things are done and when they're going in the right or the wrong direction. yeah, but I just I don't think there's any way to get a game good without just playing the heck out of it. Yeah, yeah, and having an idea of what you're measuring too, and not just saying what did you think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, having having a having a metric saying you know right. did you feel any birds were too powerful? Or, right, <laughs> yeah. right. Or how did you feel in general? Were you frustrated? Did you feel powerful? Did you you know things like that can be really helpful in terms of figuring out what's actually going on. Yeah. If if you're not playing with people that are used to giving helpful playtest feedback, sometimes they will just be impressed that you have made a game and be like, oh, it's great. It's a thing. And, yeah, no, so, and so that's probably the other important piece of it is to like find really good playtesters, especially other designers, can be super helpful because they're really thinking about how games work and what makes them better. Yeah. yeah. Well, I am... Uh... When do you think, have an idea? This will be our last question, too. Um, when do you think the expansion is going to be ready? Definitely by the end of the year. Um, Stonemeyer has a newsletter you can sign up for where they do sort of a monthly calendar of what's upcoming, so that'll have finer grain estimates as it gets closer. But I, I think we'll start talking about it in, the, in a few months and, and 
Yeah. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, I so appreciate you taking a, a little time after Absolutely. the end of a very busy, very exhausting it's very nice show. To sit down. Right? It's the best part of this job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, what, what you can't see is my feet are actually stretched out underneath this table right now just so, to rest them. <laughs> but I really appreciate you taking the time and giving us a, a, a few minutes and Absolutely. being able to share some of your experiences. Uh, so, Elizabeth Hargave, everyone, designer of Wingspan, and thank you, Ben. Thank you. <laughs>